In January, a bill was proposed entitled the Protecting Speech from Government Interference Act. Now, the bill is designed to prohibit federal employees from censoring speech. Now, this is from Congress.gov. This is the sort of text on the official government site uh, describing the bill. Specifically, the bill prohibits employees of executive agencies uh, who are otherwise in the competitive service from, number one, using their official authority, pardon me, to influence or advocate for a third party, including a private entity, to censor speech. So as you can see, that's basically lifted from the Twitter files finding right there. Prohibits you to pressure a third party, influence or advocate a third party, including a private entity, to censor speech. In other words, breaking that bond between the corporate state and the state itself. Two, censoring the speech of any person who has a pending regulatory application with or is the subject of or a participant in an active enforcement action by the employee's office or engaging in censorship while on duty, wearing a uniform, etc. Now, certain presidential appointees may not censor speech at any time, including outside normal duty hours. So as you can see there... Right from the text, very, very clear. This was clearly in response to the Twitter files revelations, specifically that first dump where they leaned on the social media companies to spike the Hunter Biden laptop. Right. They wanted to pass a bill so that that could not happen again. Seems like a good idea to me, right winger that I am. Okay. now. This week, Congressman Jamie Raskin took to the floor of the House to express his disapproval of the bill giving it an all-too-predictable nickname. Let's hear what he's got to say. Well, they've got a perfect bill for you, then. We call it the Putin Protection Act. Of course. That's what it is. The Putin Protection Act. Distinguished gentleman from New York explained Putin spent millions of dollars in 2016 to pump propaganda, electoral sabotage, into our political system. He did. Still Every running with secure- that seven years later. Still running with it. By the way, I thought it was a hundred thousand dollars worth of Facebook ads, not millions. I, and I, 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 I thought I thought they all respect Nate Silver. Right. Even <laughs> even Nate Silver came out and said, "Yeah, did I, did that amount of ads in a multi billion dollar election affect the outcome? No, no, it didn't. So, but." You know, why, why, why? If they didn't blame everything on Russia, they'd actually have to make rational arguments. Right. Right. It's just, I mean, this. If they didn't so have incredible. Russia, they'd have to invent it, which right. they more or less do in terms of how they frame it. The agency in the country told us that. We got a bipartisan report from the Senate saying it. They're agnostic about it. They, when it comes to Putin, they see no evil, they hear no evil, none of it. No. But we know. That it happened, okay? That's Putin's plan. Why? Putin cannot beat America politically. Oh no. He can't beat us economically. He can't beat us militarily. Really? Putin can't beat us philosophically. There's one thing he's got the internet. Think of the the idiocy of that statement right there. Think of the absolute stupidity of that. He can't beat us politically or philosophically, but he can beat us on the internet. Well, what do you think he's doing on the internet, jackass? He's spreading political right. and philosophical <laughs> messages. Right. So like obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't right. even make it, it doesn't, it doesn't even, even make, any, make sense. any sense. Doesn't make any sense. And look, we have not. I'm very, very proud that we have not gotten into any of the Marianne 2024 stuff on this show. We're staying away from that. But this is these are opportunities like this are important to make the point against Democratic primary politics because once again, people who vote in Democratic primaries. Love what J.B. Raskin is saying. That's what you're dealing with. There is no way to get a majority of people who take this in as wisdom and truth. There is no way to get a majority of those people to vote the way you want them to if you're on the left. Zero. Not happening. And and that's and that's why we've spoken out so much against it, because it's hard to believe. Look, uh, you know, I don't want to keep beating up on them. The Vanguard guys might actually be stupid enough to believe this. I don't believe that Crystal and Kyle are dumb enough to be in that for anything other than to build their subscribers. There's no way they're stupid enough not to understand what you're saying right now. 
that there is no path for Marianne Williamson in a Democratic primary. There's no way they don't get that. All right, let's let's keep going here. Why? Because we're a wide open country. And so he says, let's take advantage of it. Let's go on their social media platform. We'll put people who oppose Putin on the internet in jail, which they do. If you send a, a tweet or as, as, as MSNBC against would Putin, say, you're going to jail. You, you put out a tweet against his filthy imperialist Jesus. war, which some of them support in Ukraine. If you put out a tweet against that in Russia, you're going to jail. But he says, let's take advantage of America's openness. We'll take advantage of them, and we're going to put out propaganda. We'll lie about when the election is. We'll say it's on Thursday. We're taking advantage of America's free speech. Therefore, we have to restrict our free speech so that it's not taken advantage of by foreign actors. This, this, this well, is, also, this is... also whenever, whenever you have an American representative standing up there talking about imperialist wars... Well, yeah, that's uh, a joke. <laughs> Come on, what are you talking well, that about? Should, that? Yeah, I mean, that's a joke. <laughs> that's joking. a whole other thing. But we, yes, we, right. we, we, we'd never do that. Yeah, right. No. And that's the genesis of this whole thing. We have our security agencies who alert social media, and they say they're putting up fraudulent information on your platform. And now they come forward and they say the Democrats are trying to what? Tell the truth. Not Democrats, the government. Oh, good catch there a few seconds too late. The Democrats, I mean the government, are now trying to tell the truth. What he's saying here has been demonstrably uh, proven false. I, well, that's I, I, what's it, amazing that he's even saying it. It's amazing. I mean, the Twitter files have shown that this was all bullshit. Yeah, here. That, right, it, right. that they weren't uncovering foreign actors. Exactly. That they were exactly. going after people for having political opinions exactly. that the establishment might not like. Exactly. Our, our paid federal government agencies are trying to tell the social media when foreign malign actors like Russia and China and Iran are trying to interfere in our elections. That's what this is about. Putin... No, it's not... Okay, as Russell just said, I wanted to give him a chance to say that before we sort of uh, talk about this further. The Hamilton 68 Twitter files drop proved conclusively that thousands of accounts were either shadow banned, suspended, or shut down altogether because the execs at Twitter, under uh, influence and advocacy, whatever the text of the bill is here, um, yeah, from the states shut them down out of suspicion that they were foreign actors but they weren't right right so like right. The, the, the that proved that beyond any doubt that this was not about policing foreign activity on our platform notice that notice that so much for the tech revolution right right uh creating this 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 truly globalized and democratized method of communication. No, now, now that our people were convinced to vote a certain way, now it's ours. Now this is our platform. Why are the Russians on our platform, right? right. That aside, what he's saying, once again, has been proven false. Thousands of people shut down for suspicious activity, meaning are these foreign actors? We read through the whole thing. We did a whole episode on that exact right. drop. Nonsense. It's just it's right. just prove it like what right. he's saying here is debunked nonsense. It doesn't matter because the crowd that they're playing to. They're right. not it. They pro they haven't even read the Twitter files because they were told right. not to read them because by of this. their their leaders. Exactly. This is Elon Musk cherry picking and right wing journalist Matt Taibbi just being a laptop. They're not even reading it. They're just getting the secondhand orders of how to understand the Twitter files. They haven't sat down and read the Twitter files. No, not they're their, taking it from guys voters. like him. No, they're yes, taking it from exactly. guys like him. Exactly. Protection Act. They want Putin and Xi to run free over our platforms, <laughs> right. and then they want to find federal government employees Hand thousands of dollars yeah. if they alert our government to what foreign malign actors are doing. And the whole justification for it is their silly obsession with Hunter Biden's laptop. 
and this New York Post story, right. which was taken down by Twitter for one day, three weeks before the election, as an exercise of their private decision making. Then Elon Musk buys Twitter. And he fires six journalists because they disagree with him. They've got no problem with that. Okay, first, uh, well, all right. I don't remember if that's true or not, if it was only down for one day. I thought it was more than one day. But when it I, came back, it came back with a warning. So that, that right, drastically right. reduced its reach. It came back right. with, you know, on Facebook, sometimes you see, this has right. been flagged for this right. and this and this. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, that's about it. That's all we need to see from this guy. But yeah, that look, that's what you're dealing with once again, once again hiding the ball with what they actually think. That's the theme of this afternoon's show, everybody, is that these people, these fascists, these pro-war, pro-incarceration, and pro-censorship fascists, not libs anymore, no, the blue MAGA fascists, because they pose as liberals, they will not come out and say what they actually think. None of these people actually come out and say, we want more censorship. Four words. That's all they have to say. Right. That's what they right. actually think. Right. All this grandstanding, all the hearings, all the questions, all the gotcha moments and all the owns that all the MSNBC addicts tweet about is none of them actually contain the crystallized opinion of their champions, of their heroes, which is we want more censorship or well, we want let more them censorship. rot in jail. Fuck that. Like it's all yeah. like these are very basic, emotionally charged opinions that they have in order to enforce their own worldview that they cannot just admit outright because unlike the Trumpers who are just very, very comfortable in their own skin about what they feel, they have to reconcile these truly fascistic tendencies with their masquerade as good, caring, decent liberals committed to this higher democratic ideal. They're obviously not. They are obviously not. This is red fascism versus blue fascism. That's what's on the menu. Well, it's it's rainbow fascism. It's the rainbow fascism. And that that's why they need identity politics. That is why they elevate um, postmodern theory, because it's – you can argue about it forever. It's perfect for them because it, it's not aimed at any kind of reconciliation. It rejects the very idea of reconciliation right, or exactly. advancement, right? It's all against all. Right. God, you can you can spend forever in this granular intersectional web of privileges. You can fight about that forever. It's perfect. While you're fighting about that, they're grabbing the sacks of money, throwing them on the horse and riding off over the sunset. Right. Um if they had to actually speak on principles, on on governing philosophy, they'd be dead. What would they talk about? What would they say? Because they cannot justify what their actions demonstrate they believe in. Censorship, cruel and unusual punishment, uh, right. hiding information from the public. Right. I mean, that that's what they really believe in. That's what their actions tell you they believe in, but they can't get up there and say that. And, exactly. and, and as you say, the Republicans are actually ideological. So they right. they can say what they believe in. And you right. dig it or you don't dig it. I, I you know, I always say that the the advantage Republicans have long had is if you like what they're about, they're giving it to you. Right. Right. What no, what exactly. is what That's is the what appeal saying. of the Democrats? The appeal of the Democrats is only to PMCs and people who are so terrified of what the Republicans might do with power that they feel like they have no choice but to vote for the Democrats. So the right. poorest of the poor and the very privileged. Please clap.